Hello, and I will talk about uh, yet another interesting lambda calculus that we've been formalizing and studying. And this is called System FI, and for collaborators out there, so if you have all already seen my poster, but if you haven't, this is sort of the exact version of the poster I will zoom in and go through uh, one big item by item. So, our motivation is to understand the use of index data types in a more formal way. So, so index data types look like G-dependent types, but which is not. It, it only has static uh, dependencies. So it's also called lightweight dependent types because people expect that it might be easier to do lightweight proofs within programming languages supporting these kind of data types. And prime example is GHPs, and this really made uh, things available for, for the everyday programmer in the real world. And these are some of the examples of uh, index data types. And for comparison, we all know what the regular data types are. They are pretty, they have regular recursion structures that preserve all the indices or parameters. And in Haskell, we have some more richer data types that can actually recurse over heterogeneous indices. This is called a nested data type, and with GADG extensions, we can go even more wild. We can vary the results of the data types and use this kind of uh, term reflected, reflecting the information of the closed type world and do interesting things like data type generic programming. But yet, there's another pattern of use of GADTs in Haskell or index data types. Uh, we actually want to say some properties that relate values to these interesting data structures. The uh, sim most simple example everybody writes is the length index list, and we can also do similar things about uh, some closeness of lambda calculus uh, with the broad indices that is indexed by the size of the context. And this is a hypothetical or maybe Agra looking like not Haskell syntax, but we, when, if we are going to develop this kind of language, what kind of theory do we need? I don't want to go to full dependent lambda calculus because it isn't a dependent type language at all. But system f or system f omega isn't enough because there aren't any terms appearing in the types. That was our like the narrow motivation and. More broadly, what's happening in practice is that uh, uh, we do want to show some properties about the code. And there is always this worry or people using more fancy systems that has uh, more formal properties and only unary natural numbers maybe will come and argue that I can't believe you're true because uh, there, are, there may be uh, loop that proves false inside and you can prove inconsistency. And another issue which is being addressed quite recently is that we have to basically uh, make a copy of some term that we want to index types in the type level. You have to, instead of defining that form in, in, as a data type, you have to kind of make a bogus two different types like that. And recently, there has been this cool thing called data type promotion, and you don't have to do this anymore, but you still uh, have to rewrite all the functions, like plus, minus, or, or comparison over natural numbers, because there's an issue with type checking that if there's a non-normalizing term, or even in real world Haskell, it's worse, it can have unsafe for form IO and shoot some nuclear missile just by compiling, so we don't want that. And so let's forget about the type inference, that's the language design issue, but by studying this kind of small calculus we have been seeing, we may be able to 
address or given give a good idea of how to address these kind of issues that we have. So this is a motivating example that uh, how different kind of complex data types could be mapped into uh, well-known calculus like system F or system F omega with the church encoded terms and types are empirically encoded types. And when we see the last example, we have uh, when you want to write a uh, church encoded kind of representation of vectors, you would want to write the vector like this. And we can see that what extensions we need uh, in addition to f omega. So first of all, we would need uh, is working. So we need a uh, new arrow that goes not from something constructed by stars, but you, yeah, we would want to have the type constructor to uh, expect a term of value. So we need a new kind, I just call it index arrow kind. And of course you would need a polymorphism over values, not only types, because we want to say that the cons is defined for all list of all lengths. You would also need an abstraction and application, and I just highlight the application for indices with curly braces. And so this is this part is the full syntax. This part is the let's go there. Okay, sorry. This part is the full syntax of uh, system FI. So it has variables, terms, and kinds, and you see these four elements that is extended. And the important part how we make this not the dependent type language is to split the context into two parts. Oops. I didn't know this, this worked. With delta and gamma. So delta is delta grows only from the type constructor binders. And gamma only grows from term binders. So we need some additional typing rules as well. Uh, this is the usual typing rule that you can look up a variable in a gamma context, but since we also want to look up variables defined by these things, we can also look up into delta. But in the kinding rule, in the, when you go up to the type world, when you want to type check, uh, when you want to make sure the kind is right, for example, a vector of A applied to some natural <coughs> number term, then you make sure that F expects some index argument, but this should be well typed in an empty gamma context because there is no uh, dynamic uh, or term level binding running around the type world. You have to start from the empty. So this means that indices in the type level could never depend on runtime values. So this is how we make sure that this is not a dependent type calculus. Then, uh, it is quite straightforward to prove that if we have some term that is typable in FI, then it is obviously typable in F omega. Uh, there are some subconditions, but we also have a more general version of this theorem uh, in the draft paper we wrote. And this is how basically we prove strong normalization. And this is, we also say that this calculus is logically consistent if we kind of prove this construct a proof term by curry Howard, because it is a strict subset of a well-known calculus called restricted implicit calculus, which is a subset of ICC, which is a dependent calculus, but we are even not dependent, so it's a strict subset. So what we have done is that we identified features that is, uh, we think it is sort of minimal that if we only add these four things into f omega, then we can express uh, data types and some of their well-behaved recursion schemes by just embedding them into this pure lambda calculus. Uh, so, yeah, that was pretty much it. And ongoing work is that we showed that some hypothetical syntax code, and that's called Max, and we're all, we all, it, it will need equality at some point, so we're trying to encode like this equality for term indices and 
think that would work. Yes. 